Today's topic is Cisco Cloud Web Security with Expert Story Tweety Yates. Before we begin, we would like to let you know about some upcoming events that may be of interest to you. On May 12th, our expert series webcast will be on Cisco UCS Mini Architecture Troubleshooting and Upgrade. This upcoming session will cover the UCS Mini Architecture Troubleshooting and Upgrade Procedure, and you can register for this and other upcoming webcasts by clicking the link in the chat window. Be sure to look for other webcasts coming soon via the Cisco Support Community by visiting the Expert Corner events page. We have a few Ask the Expert discussion threads running now through April 10th. Cisco's 802.11 AC Solutions, Deployment, Design, and Interop, and 802.1X Configuring and Troubleshooting. This is an opportunity to learn and ask questions about how to configure and troubleshoot 802.1X. And if you haven't already, then be sure to join the Cisco Support Community where you can share current real-world technical support knowledge with your peers and experts. Check out the Class of 2015 event top contributors and spotlight awardees on the Cisco Support Community. And if you're interested in conducting an event for us and becoming a top event contributor yourself, please go to the Experts Bureau and sign up. Also, make sure to take a moment to rate the content of your peers' documents, videos, and blogs. In doing so, you'll help us recognize the wonderful content that they contribute on a regular basis, and ratings do encourage more contributions. And now on to today's presentation. Our expert joining us today is Story Tweedy Yates. Story Tweedy Yates is an international product marketing manager for cloud web security at Cisco. Her career at Cisco began in the Global Marketing and Corporate Communications MBA Leadership Development Rotational Program. She has degrees from both Stanford University and Thunderbird School in Global Management. Assisting Story today is Petr Chernyowski. Petter is a product manager for Cognitive Threat Analytics Technology, part of Cisco Cloud Web Security Premium Service. He began his career at Cisco Systems through an acquisition of Cognitive Security in 2013. He now drives the network behavior detection technology within the advanced threat portfolio at Cisco Systems. Petter has acquired MSc in Software Engineering at the Czech Technical University, Faculty of Nuclear Science and Physical Engineering. MBA at the University of Northern Virginia, and a PhD in management in the University of Economics in Prague in the Czech Republic. He has started his career in telecoms with a Logica CMG in global software engineering and management roles, and has gained further regional experience in solution architecture, consulting and sales at Ericsson, focusing on IP, IoT, M2M technologies, working with global brands across the telecoms industry finally accelerating his career in cyber at Cognitive Security and Cisco Systems. Story and Petter will be continuing the discussion in an Ask the Expert event now through April 17th, so if you have more questions, please visit the Expert Corner events page on the Cisco Support Community or reference the link in the chat window. And before we begin, Please find the first poll during this event in the lower right corner. Mark your answers, and this will let Story and Petter tailor their presentation to meet your needs. So the polling question is, how familiar are you with Cisco Security Portfolio and Cisco Cloud Web Security? A, I am familiar with Cisco Cloud Web Security. B, I am familiar with the Web Security Appliance. C, I am familiar with ASA Firepower Services. D, I am familiar with all of the above. And E, I'm not familiar with any of the above. So take a moment to answer that. And if you would like a copy of the presentation slides, click the PDF file link in the chat box. The recording of this presentation will be available on the Cisco support community as soon as we are able to process it. So bookmark the URL in the chat window and check back later this week for the video. After the presentation, come back and visit the events topic under the expert corner. On each event the Cisco support community presents, you will find links to FAQs, videos, presentation downloads, and ask the expert discussions. And for today's Expert Series webcast, Story will start with her presentation and demo, and then we'll dive into the live question submissions for the remainder of today's event. During our live presentation, you may submit questions for Story to answer using the Q&A box on the right-hand side of the console. So please begin posting your questions now to give her the chance of answering them. When the webcast ends and you close your event, please take the survey and let Story and Petter know how you rate this event. So now I will hand the mic over to Story for her presentation. Thanks, Francine. 
And thanks to everybody who's on the phone right now. It's uh, great to have you here. As uh, Francine said, I am a product marketing manager for cloud web security. Uh, what, what is cloud web security? And uh, what, in what realm of security does web security play? Uh, this is great. I can actually see the poll results here on the right. So it looks like uh, most people are not familiar with any of our security products. So uh, that's great to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through our solution in a very uh, high-level manner. And then I'm going to go through uh, an actual demo so that you can see the uh, actual manifestation of this product as if you had it uh, in your organization. So now going back to, to the topic of, of the webinar, uh, what is web security? So what it is is uh, a way to protect your organization from your own users. So we see that with the second uh, bullet point here, without proper control, your own users can put your business at risk. So this means uh, control over clicking on inappropriate content online as well as content that contains uh, malicious links or malicious files or add-ons. And uh, the biggest question that we get when we start uh, explaining this solution is, is this security for the cloud or is this security delivered by the cloud? So this solution is specifically security delivered by the cloud. Uh, security for the cloud would be something more along the lines of the of data center security product. Uh, there's, it's no mystery if, if one was to read the news that security is a, a hot topic at the moment, and uh, there's good reason for this. There are, there are a lot of uh, quite, uh, quite dangerous threats out there. So uh, in order to really understand how a security product can uh, protect an organization, it's important to understand the threats that are out there. So starting with Heartbleed on the left, this is a vulnerability in uh, OpenSSL, which is a way of decrypting online traffic. So this is a, a way in which hackers could potentially steal your, uh, your uh, passwords and information online. Moving on to String of Pearl, this is a phishing uh, um, threat where people will get sent uh, hoax emails, and within that email there will be a, a Word document, for example, that seems normal, but uh, once it's downloaded, it actually prompts you to download a macro piece of software, which is, in effect, the malware in and of itself. So initially, the file seems normal, but once it gets into your system and you download that malware, it starts uh, exhibiting harmful, harmful behaviors. What String of Pearls did was it looked for, specifically for password information in industries that had a lot of money, so banking, for example. Uh, now, if we're talking about banking, Zeus uh, really hit the jackpot in terms of targeting the banking industry. Uh, Zeus is a Trojan, also accomplished through phishing, and uh, which, which is sending uh, hoax emails and then uh, trying to get people to download malware uh, off of those emails. This is actually a, a botnet that was downloaded, also through uh, automatically downloaded just by opening the email, and millions of dollars were robbed through this particular uh, threat. And lastly, we have Shellshock which is a vulnerability in, in Bash, which is a code that controls Apache servers, which is a very common type of, of server. Um, servers contain all of our important information. So uh, you can imagine how dangerous a vulnerability would be in a code that might allow you to command one of these servers from a remote location. In the face of these threats, what can we do? Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, our competition uh, would suggest or uh, methods to take that uh, might not get at the, the heart of the security issue. So some of these approaches are, are listed here. And what we would argue is that there are some traditional uh, holes or, or problems with these approaches uh, that we have taken in stride and that we uh, do things differently uh, to protect people in the best way possible against these threats. 
So uh, we have real-time threat information that adapts to the changing threat landscape, uh, which is uh, changing and uh, getting more and more sophisticated all the time. And then lastly, uh, a security solution has to be, has to make sense for your organization. It has to fit with your business. And um, you'll see specifically how the cloud solution can really help in that aspect. So when we talk about uh, the features that make up Cisco Cloud Web Security, we can put them in uh, to three different pillars, uh, kind of a, a mnemonic device here to help you understand the features and what they mean. So number one, we have comprehensive defense. This is something that every web security solution should contain. And then we have advanced threat protection, which is really what uh, defines us compared to our competition. And then we have superior flexibility, which I just mentioned in the previous slide. And uh, we're talking about how to deploy the solution. It's a cloud solution. So how does this work? Uh, what do you have to do within your organization in order to get this uh, security solution up and running? Beginning with the features in the comprehensive defense pillar, right? So these are the features that every web security solution needs to have in order to be effective. So we start with web filtering. Uh, we have lists of domains and URLs that are uh, either uh, we know they contain malicious content or we know that they're safe so we can allow access based on those lists. But then we also allow the user to customize uh, the kinds of content that they want their uh, users to be able, uh, for example, an administrator would customize the kinds of categories and content that um, he or she wanted uh, the users in the organization to be able to access. So inappropriate content such as gambling uh, or adult content might be blocked, for example, on work uh, computers. Web reputation. Uh, so there are some sites that are new uh, that we don't know about, and so we use web reputation as a scoring mechanism to define what domains and URLs we're going to allow and which ones we don't. And again, this is based on two things, malicious content, but then also appropriate versus inappropriate categories, uh, content categories. Dynamic content analysis. This is uh, important in the sense that uh, it, it provides a great type of uh, user experience because a web page is not composed of just one piece of information. There are multiple servers feeding information into one web page. So what we can do is we can look at the content on each part of a web page. Let's say there's a gambling ad on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, and my administrator has, has blocked uh, content that contains gambling information. So that ad will actually be blocked for me as a user, but the rest of the page will come through. So with our competition, you would either have a blocked page or an entire page that's let through. But we can actually take each piece of a page and either block it or allow it based on the content that's been defined by the administration or the administrator. And uh, we can then see what content, uh, for the web usage reporting piece on the right, we can see what content uh, users have been accessing online. Uh, so for example, I can see the top categories visited on my users' browsers. It could be uh, business news, uh, entertainment news, file transfer services, uh, which, and so you'll see this later in the demo, how this reporting works. Now, another piece of comprehensive defense is also uh, the basic malware and uh, usage control aspect. So application visibility and control. We can actually get as granular as saying we want our users to be able to like and comment on our own Cisco, for example, uh, posts on Facebook, but we don't want our users to be able to upload or download anything uh, because it could contain malicious content. So we can actually block uh, activity to that uh, granular of a level. And that's also something that uh, the competition doesn't have. This is an area where we really excel is this granular application and social media uh, control. Uh, when we look at outbreak intelligence, uh, this is the same thing as dynamic content analysis, so breaking apart a web page into its different components 
except this time we're analyzing it for malware as opposed to content, uh, appropriate or inappropriate content. Management, uh, I mentioned before that the uh, administrator could set policies or set controls as to what kinds of content he or she wants um, users to be able to access. So that's how you would do this. You set policies from a single place, a single interface, and I'll show you in the demo how this is done. And then uh, we also have, uh, I mentioned previously, protection for a company uh, computer. Well, we all know that the workplace these days is no longer just in the, uh, in the office building. It's also at home, and people are bringing their laptops home. So we also have protection for roaming users while they're on their laptops. And this is a particularly important piece of uh, the fact that this is a cloud solution. This is a benefit that comes from this being a cloud solution as opposed to an on-premises solution. I've described the basic piece of the comprehensive defense product pillar and all the features that go in underneath it. So uh, I mentioned before that the advanced threat protection aspect of Cisco Cloud Web Security is really a competitive differentiator for us. And this is because we have the ability to go back in time to threats, uh, to eliminate threats and fi um, malicious files that have entered the network despite all the protection and controls that have been put in place to prevent this. So what AMP does, Advanced Malware Protection, it takes a fingerprint of a file as soon as it enters the network, and then it follows that file in its complete trajectory through the network so that if, as uh, mentioned in Zeus and String of Pearls, when a file first enters, it might not seem like a bad file, but after a month or two months, it actually turns into something malicious that's doing harm. So we have the ability to go uh, backwards, find out exactly where that file entered the network, and then eliminate it in all those places that we see it. And so this is retrospective security. This is something uh, Cisco has that the competition does not, and it's, uh, it's really pretty, um, pretty amazing. As if uh, that wasn't enough, we also have cognitive threat analytics to look at the, uh, all traffic from all users at all times to identify areas where there have been zero-day breaches in the network. So this really works alongside AMP, which is mostly focused on uh, malicious files. And uh, so this is the, uh, Cognitive Threat Analytics is able to do this by taking in all of that data, uh, utilizing cloud processing, and finding out what would a normal curve look like for this network, for this user. And then based on those normal curves, it can determine what would then look like an anomaly that could signify a threat. So I'm story, uh, I'm online, and I'm typically downloading a certain amount of information online. And then all of a sudden, this traffic spikes. This is something that cognitive threat analytics would be able to pick up. And just to reemphasize, this is especially important in looking at zero-day threats. And for those um, not familiar with security and the terminology, zero-day threats, that means uh, something nobody's ever, ever seen before. So it's something new. Now, I'm talking about one Cisco product here, which is Cisco Cloud Web Security. But the fact is, is that we have an entire portfolio of uh, security products that all are capable of identifying zero-day threats in one way or another. So what we have is the ability through TELUS, which is our threat intelligence research group, we have the ability of our, for our products to actually benefit each other. So let's say cognitive threat analytics, the feature I just described, let's say that that identifies a zero-day threat and it identifies a malicious server that's being used to uh, host command and control activity, um, which is like remote um, remote communication. We could then update all of the other Cisco products with the identity of the server, therefore preventing them from communicating with this server and blocking the threat uh, within, uh, with a much shorter time than if we, if we did not have this kind of uh, data sharing capability. So that's really the, the benefit that TELUS, TELUS brings, and there's a lot of 
uh, data here on the slide as to how much data we process every day. Um, and the solution works vice versa for any kinds of threats that are discovered on other Cisco products, they're then also updated to cloud uh, web security. And this update actually occurs every five minutes. And what this really does is it lessens the time uh, that threats are uh, able to attack organizations. And that, that time, that lessened uh, time to detection is really important in terms of mitiga uh, mitigating damage to organizations from attacks. Uh, so, um, everybody did a really good job with the, the answer there. The correct answer was all of the above for before, during, and after. And I'm actually going to show exactly what that meant uh, uh, later in terms of whether Cloud Web Security protects before, during, or after an attack. So for now, um, this is what I'll be going into uh, a little bit with some collateral that's available on Cisco.com to explain each of these different deployment guides. So when I talked about this being a cloud solution, uh, it means that there is no need to have additional hardware uh, in an organization in order to deploy and have this start working to protect your organization. So what we see on the left side of the screen we call these redirection methods. So what will happen is you have a user, they make a web request, the web request goes to the redirection method, the redirection method then redirects the traffic to one of our proxies in a data center in one of 23 locations around the world. That then goes to the internet, and then it goes from the internet back to our proxy, back to the redirection method, and then back to the user. So this is the way you would deploy the solution, but you also see on the, on the right part of the left side, so the standalone area, what that means is that it's actually not necessary to use any of these Cisco products to deploy the solution. It can be deployed as a standalone method. The benefit of being able to deploy off of these other Cisco products is the fact that uh, there's no need to buy another piece of hardware if you already have these pieces of hardware in your network. And there are actually certain benefits to deploying uh, through each of these different redirection methods, and uh, I will, I'll get into that in, in a little bit. In terms of licensing and how you would actually pay for this solution. There's two basic options. Uh, one is uh, called Essentials and the other one is, is Premium. The Premium offering offers the uh, or allows for the advanced threat capabilities that I've been mentioning here, the, the ones that differentiate us from, from the competition. We also have seat-based pricing available. We have bandwidth pricing available. Uh, especially in, in North America and the U.S., although exceptions can be made for other locations. And then we have an option for an ELA, which is uh, an all-you-can-eat option, and uh, cloud is, is great to uh, include with, with that. I mentioned our data centers, our proxies previously. This is the footprint that we have here. You, all the little blue dots are where our data centers are located. These are all next-generation, powered by Cisco data centers. And uh, we're in the process of, of updating all of them. So all of the uh, locations with the most traffic have now been updated to, to next generation data centers. So this is where it gets really fun. Uh, this is an infographic that uh, puts all of the features and benefits that we just talked about into one view. And it also gives the view uh, in terms of how we think about security here at Cisco. So that polling question, and what part does cloud web security protect uh, against an attack, before an attack, during, or after? Well, uh, the question these days, it's not whether you will be uh, compromised at some point. Uh, you know, maybe we will, maybe we won't. That's, that's actually not the reality. The reality is that you will be compromised at some point. So if you knew this, and you knew you would be compromised, would you do security differently, or would you think about it in a different way? And um, the answer is that, yes, we would think about it in terms of before an attack, we would think about security during an attack, or after an attack. So all of the features from those three pillars, K 
can be organized into an attack continuum, we like to call it. So it's either uh, before an attack, during an attack, or after. And um, so the, the other things that I want to show on this infographic, because we've gone through the features quite a bit, is number one, to emphasize the after portion. Uh, so AMP and cognitive threat analytics, that these can actually help you after you've already been compromised. So when the stakes are the highest, that's where we can help you. I also want to uh, mention again that outbreak intelligence, so the ability to scan each part of the page for malware, and then our granular uh, visibility and control into applications and social media, those two things are uh, real competitive differenti differentiators for us. If we go to the right uh, side of this slide and down a little bit into the admin corner, this is where I was talking about being able to look at uh, reports and set policies. So I'm actually going to show you how to do that in the demos uh, that are coming up next. And log extraction is a new feature. It's the last uh, little green box on the right side under management and reporting. What this means is that if you're in a big organization and you want to take your cloud web security data and put it together with data from other applications, um, maybe in SIM, for example, uh, you can do this, uh, and we, we allow you to do this. This is a, our number one, actually, customer requested feature that is now available. The last thing that I'm going to mention on this infographic uh, is the traffic redirection methods on the left side. So we mentioned these before, and I also mentioned, I know this is um, most likely a technical crowd, uh, a support crowd, so I wanted to mention the particular benefits that go into each of the different uh, redirection methods. So if we look at WSA, uh, if you connect through WSA, uh, you can actually do some caching, which is a way to hold data on the side and, and basically increase the speed of the service. Uh, so that's something that, in general, is only available on the on-premises version of, of this product. But actually, if you redirect your traffic through WSA, you actually have this feature available to you. Um, through, through the standalone uh, method, you actually can set quotas in terms of bandwidth and time that users are allowed to uh, do certain activities online. So let's say I only want my users to be able to access Facebook during one hour uh, of the lunchtime, uh, or just one hour in general. Uh, I just want them one hour a week, that's it. I can set that if I redirect through the standalone method. With the ISR G2 redirection method, uh, we're actually very related to another Cisco offering, which is called IWAN, or Intelligent uh, WAN. And what the benefit that this provides is uh, sending traffic out to the cloud instead of backhauling all of your traffic back to headquarters. So imagine how much bandwidth and money you can save uh, if you were able to do this uh, using, using this cloud product and then an ISR G2 router. And lastly, with AnyConnect, this is a, uh, a deployment model in which we can protect our roaming users uh, while, while they're on the road with their laptops. Now, this being said, uh, actually connecting through any, any connect is not the only way to provide protection for users with this cloud solution while they're, uh, while they're roaming. We actually have an SSL uh, tunnel that connects whenever you're deployed to CWS, and so you still have protection for your browser while you are away from the corporate network. So then this was the, the second polling question that all of you did uh, perfectly on. Uh, and that's what the infographic just showed, is that cloud web security protects before, during, and after an attack. So well done. Uh, these are some testimonials from customers. It, just to show you the, the real results of, of how organizations have been uh, affected positively by, by this product. And the point, the main point I want to make on, on this slide is the third point that says automatic session reestablishment eliminates the need to continuously keep reauthenticating VPN access. Uh, we have SAML support, so SAML support, and this is a single sign-on. It's another way to say uh, we have a single sign-on. 
So this is uh, another way that the user experience is, is well taken care of in this solution, and it's something that the uh, on-premises comp uh, competition, uh, they, they don't have this, this ability. And finally, before getting into the demo, we just return back to the three pillars that uh, just as a mnemonic, they help us understand comprehensive defense. It's uh, protecting our organization from our own users in terms of malicious content that could be accessed online or inappropriate content that could be accessed online. We have advanced threat protection, which is the after phase of the attack continuum uh, with advanced malware protection and cognitive threat analytics, helping to uh, detect zero-day breaches. And um, lastly, the superior flexibility, which I went into, into a lot of depth with the, uh, the redirection method. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and go to a demo environment. And so here, here's the, the demo that, that we'll be looking at. So this is the basic administration and reporting functionality. Uh, we've got all these different tabs that we can use. Now, this is the basic product, CWS Essentials. If you were to purchase CWS Premium, as I mentioned before, we add on this Threats tab here. So I'll, I'll go through both options, uh, starting with the main reporting interface here. The best way to start with the demo is with this Reports icon here, and it's probably going to make me sign in again, which is fine. So we'll go to reports here to the left. What we do first is we want to set our time frame for this report. And what's great is that we have a lot of predefined reports here. So there's actually no need to go through a process of figuring out how to create in a really granular uh, sense the, the reports because there are, they're already here for us, a lot of really useful ones. I always like to start uh, with the demo in terms of bandwidth, because this is something that costs uh, organizations a lot of money. So it's important for people to understand how they can, how they're using these, this resource and how they can maybe control this cost. So we'll look at bandwidth consumed by category. And <clears throat> category is going to give us the different uh, types of activity and information that's being served up to users online. So, for example, we have business and industry uh, domains, we have entertainment URLs, et cetera. And you can see here it's sorted by bandwidth. So if I wanted to change and sort by browse time, I would just click on this column and it would do that for me. Going back to bandwidth, uh, I want to actually look at just file transfer services. So I'm going to set a filter. So now it says only file transfer services in terms of the category. And I also want to see the web page that people are going to be visiting within that category and the bandwidth associated with that. So as soon as this uh, repopulates, you'll see here, now I have web pages and I have bandwidth by those web pages uh, under only this category, file transfer services. But we'll see here there's three different lines for hot file. So I actually think it would be a better overall summary if I could just see hot file on one line instead of on three different lines. To do that, I simply go to host and I change it to second level domain, like so. I would also like to see users that are responsible for this bandwidth usage on my network. So I'm going to go to users here and then I'll click launch, launch search. And what we'll see is that uh, because the user area is sorted by, by hits, which is just basic internet traffic, uh, the report will come out like that. But just to change that easily, we click on bandwidth. And there's a couple different ways to view this information. We can actually view it by uh, chart as well. And um, there's a pie option that's available, not when it gets this granular, but that's um, an available view as well. I'd like to go back to the grid. We can also download the report as a PDF or an Excel file, and we can save this as a custom report. Now getting into that aspect of controlling policies from a single place. I'm the administrator, and I say hot file is a place that I don't want my users to go to or access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the web filtering tab up here, 
I'll go up to management, I'll click on filters, and I'll do general users block, I'll click that group, and I can go to domains and put in here hotfile.com. And we can say, okay, I don't, uh, once I save this, it'll be saved as a filter so that my users cannot go to this domain. And in terms of the application visibility and control, we can, uh, I can show you the granularity of this. So on Facebook, I can click, I don't want my users to download an attachment or upload an attachment. Uh, but yeah, they can like or tag something and they can post something if they're, you know, doing some kind of work on, on the Cisco Facebook page. Now, these filters being set are not actually creating a rule. In order to create a rule, we actually have to uh, have three pieces of information and we have to do it in here. So what we just did was the what piece. What are we filtering for? That's the filter. But we also need a group. So who is going to, uh, who is this rule going to apply to? And then we need the when. So is it during lunchtime? Is it uh, just during work, work hours? When does this rule apply? And uh, so that being said, I will show one more very detailed piece, and hopefully it won't be too detailed for the audience, but um, a difference, a main difference between this product, the URL filtering that is in this product versus the URL filtering that would be in one of our next generation firewalls with Firepower Services, we protect uh, and we inspect HTTPS traffic. Uh, whereas they inspect HTTP traffic. So here in the interface, in order to inspect HTTPS traffic, we have to actually go in and manage these policies in the same exact way that we would have done, uh, as I just showed you, creating a rule. So you just have to define uh, what policy, what HTTPS traffic we're going to inspect. I think that's uh, detailed enough for, for that piece of the administration, and I'm just going to show one more report to show you the, the social media reporting. So we have Facebook. We can see here the top 10 users that consume the most bandwidth on Facebook, uh, which I, I personally think is something that most organizations might, might want to look at at some time or another. And here's the, the pie chart that I was mentioning before. So uh, this is the overall demo uh, for, for the Essentials product. So now, as I promised earlier, we have the Threats tab here, which is when you, when you buy CWS Premium, this is the extra visibility that you're going to get. So what you'll see um, as soon as I sign in again here, what you'll see is that we have incredible visibility into the uh, zero-day threats that are present in uh, a network. So I've gone into the threats tab here. We have two different tabs. We have confirmed threats and we have detected threats. Confirmed threats are threats that we are 100% sure they are uh, real, they're in your organization, and they're actually causing harmful activities to take place. Detected threats, we're about 70% sure that this is an incident and that uh, threatening activities are taking place. Now, the difference is that uh, AMP, so the file analysis, goes in detected, and then the cognitive threat analytics, uh, looking at all traffic, all users at all time, those, um, that goes into the confirm tab. And the reason we're not 100% sure that the files from uh, um, identified in AMP are threatening is because I could have a malicious file on my computer, it's downloaded, but at the moment it's not actually exhibiting any threatening behavior, it's just a malicious downloaded file on my computer. Whereas cognitive threat analytics will only detect those incidents, those behaviors, those activities that are associated with a real actual threat. So that being said, we have um, some great data here as to uh, these threats that are, are um, present. And I'm just going to zoom out for a second. So uh, what we have here is we have just a, a group name. Um, so this is a, a group of a bunch of different incidents that have been categorized together as uh, one, one threat. We can see how many users were affected in the last 
seven days. We can also see here that uh, it's affected 100 plus users in, in multiple different companies. So this is a broad threat. This is not a targeted threat. If this had said five plus users in uh, five companies, then we would have known that it was a much more targeted threat. We also can see here that the threat has actually been in play in our environment for uh, quite some time, for 43 days. So that's really helpful information to have. Um, I'm going to back up one second here and say the group that would, in, within an organization, uh, that would really be able to use this tool is the threat incident response team because they have all the information that they need here about uh, the threats that are present in uh, their environment and how they can go and fix it. And for the uh, essentials, uh, for just this uh, product in general, because it's a cloud product, this is a great product for uh, branches and uh, remote offices. So that being said, coming back here to this paragraph, everything in this, a good summary of the threat is in this paragraph. So it's an adware, click fraud, botnet. And then here is some advice on how to go about eliminating the threat. And many, um, many customers find that it actually helps to re-image the devices in order to eliminate the threat entirely. We see all of the users that have been affected right here since February 24th. So this is 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, users that have been affected in total. We see a timeline. And we see examples of the web requests that uh, we've, notif that we've uh, detected that are, uh, are threatening. And I'm going to move down here to um, the individual incidents that actually comprise the overall uh, group and category that we saw above, which, which describes all these incidents together. So if I click this one, if I want to see a little bit more information about exactly what the attackers are doing in my environment, this is a parallel coordinate view that will show us that information. And it'll also allow me to categorize here uh, notes whether the threat has been resolved or whether it hasn't been resolved. So here I have my time. Uh, in terms of when this particular activity was taking place. We have a description of the type of activity. So this is a command and control channel uh, that we are seeing here. And these activities have all been categorized by cognitive threat analytics as known activities that are associated with threats. We also have the domains here that are being used to forward the information along to these IP addresses, which uh, represent the servers that are being used by the attackers. So if I have 21 IPs, I could have 21 different countries, or maybe there's a few different servers in uh, the same country. And then we even have the autonomous systems associated here. This is pretty groundbreaking if you're, if you're looking at how to eliminate threats within your environment and how to find things that uh, many products have, have just not been able to find for you. And this score here, that this eight risk level, is an estimate from one to 10, 10 being the worst. It's an estimate as to how much damage this threat could potentially do in your environment. So we've looked at the confirm tab and we can do the same thing in the detected tab and we can look at the AMP trajectory of incidents. And right here, for example, uh, we have the parallel coordinates view, the time, activity, domain, and IP. Uh, the last thing that I'll show you on this particular screen is the SHA. Uh, so the SHA is a fingerprint. So I mentioned before that whenever with AMP, whenever a file enters an environment, uh, a fingerprint is taken. So that's what we call the fingerprint. It's a SHA. And then the SHA uh, follows the file along wherever it goes in the network. And then afterwards, we can look at it. We can uh, correlate it with other variants of the same type of file or malware. Uh, and so, so that's why we have the, the SHA here. And um, the skull signal here just means that it's an actual threat and it has not been blocked. So uh, going to the last view within this demo, we have our dashboard that has some uh, pretty nice high-level information to look at. We have 
the Facebook usage I showed before, we have web virus blocks. And then AMP blocks we have here. And what we'll show, what we'll see is uh, the files within our sandbox. So uh, sandbox is a pretty basic feature of any type of uh, advanced malware protection functionality, uh, except ours also includes file retrospection. So here we can see the number of files put in a sandbox, put in that virtual environment to see how that malware plays. Does it play nice? Is it, is it actually malicious? How does it, how does it work? So um, if we click on the file sandbox, we can actually see a sandboxing report of everything that's gone on within, uh, within the sandbox according to that particular file. Um, this might take some time to uh, refresh here. We'll just wait two more seconds. And waiting. So here we have a, a report for the entire sandbox. We have a malicious file here. So let's look at what that sandbox reported uh, for them. All right, so uh, we have a score from 1 to 100. 100 is actually the worst score, uh, so this is pretty, pretty bad. And then we have a lot of different criteria that we would measure a file on, uh, and, and this is the really in-depth information. Um, if you take anything away from this sandbox area, uh, I would just come away with the knowledge that what we're looking at here are zero-day threats. So these are threats nobody has seen before. And this product, as well as the rest of the security, Cisco security portfolio, we have the, the ability to identify these threats and help you uh, remediate and eliminate them. The very last thing I'm going to show before we go to uh, question and answer live is some resources on Cisco.com. So uh, we have the deployment guides for the different uh, redirection methods that I was talking about before. So for anybody interested in, in support information or an in actual nitty gritty of how you might deploy these solutions, uh, this solution, these are, uh, so this is on Cisco.com under the white papers area, and we have links that we can also, also share directly to this information. Um, one of the biggest questions that we get from people is which redirection option should I choose and why? So that's why I went through with you a little bit about the specific benefits of each redirection method. But then to help, we also, under the solution overview area, we have the, uh, a PDF document for you to try and, and determine what might be the best direction uh, redirection method. And um, the easy URL to get to any cloud web security information is cisco.com slash go slash CWS. Um, so with that, I think that um, we can go ahead and, and open up the, the Q&A uh, live portion. Great. Thank you, Story. Uh, fantastic presentation. Also, I want to thank everyone for participating in the event polling, and we're going to answer some of the questions our viewers have submitted today. If you can't stay with us for the Q&A, please be sure to click on the evaluation link provided in the chat to let us know how this session met your business needs and expectations. Uh, so, Story, we have a couple really good questions. Uh, let's start with the first one. Is this able to block pages uh, starting with HTTPS? Normally, standard WebSense deployment was having HTTPS block issue but they are able to block HTTP page. Can, Cisco, uh, can the Cisco solution overcome this? Yeah, that's a, a good question. So um, that was the piece of the demo where I was showing that uh, we, we can block HTTPS traffic. Uh, and so you would define your normal policy and then you would also define under your HTTPS area of the administration what you're going to be examining within that HTTPS traffic stream. So the short answer is yes. Okay. And another good question here. Can this solution help us block browser-based search 
uh, assume this person's company uh, ensures all users should use IE 10.0. No Chrome, Firefox search is allowed. Is this possible to do? That's a good question, and uh, I might actually open that up to our either Petter or Mahul uh, for whoever wants to answer that one. Maybe Mahul, why don't you give it a go? <clears throat> Or maybe that was Petter who came off mute. Petter, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna. So my whole originally answered that in the uh, in the in the chat. So yes, this is possible. It's based on will be a policy block based on the user um, agent string of the browser. So yes, short answer. Okay. Thank you, Petter. Uh, Here's another one. A user has a laptop. She's at home and she's connecting to the internet, not via any connect. How is that user protected and at what stage? And feel free to elaborate on that. Okay. Um, Mahul, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I can probably take this one uh, as well. So the, uh, the answer is actually twofold. So the, the question asks for, you know, if that user is not using any connect, what I, what I sense from that question is, that they would not be using AnyConnect for the corporate VPN. Well, what you um, need to bear in mind is that AnyConnect supports split tunneling. We do have capability there to send off all the web traffic to the Cloud Web Security Solution. So the roaming, uh, the roaming users, uh, users sitting at home, would be protected through this piece of AnyConnect that's going to push their web traffic through to the Cloud Web without having to have a VPN tunnel open at the same time. Okay, thank you. All right, and there was a question here, is this a scan safe? That's a good question. So uh, this is the rebranded product, ScanSafe product. So ScanSafe was the acquisition which was the base of this product, but since then uh, we've made a lot of uh, improvements added a lot of features, so it is no longer ScanSafe, although if you have heard of ScanSafe, um, that's where this originally came from. Okay, and then there's another question here on does this, uh, does CWS support Google Face Search? Mahul, can you answer that? Yes, it does. Okay. Oh. Okay, and you might have just kind of uh, touched base on this a little bit, but where does the source fire acquisition come into play in this solution? Um, so I, I can answer that. Uh, so source fire is the AMP PC, advanced malware protection piece, and um, so the, the retrospective security aspect. And um, I'll also say that SourceFire and the, the products that have come in through the acquisition have been integral to building up also the threat intelligence that we already had in Talos. Uh, but since all those products feed into Talos and then Talos updates all the products with the latest threat information, the SourceFire acquisition has been integral into that, uh, feeding into that threat intelligence base as well. Okay. And here's another question. Can, can CWS trace back the real IP address of the attacker that created the malware? So the person says, does it able, is it able to trace back proxy to the real IP? Petter, do you know that? Yeah, so, um, so in general, attribution is not always uh, easy and direct. Um, and I think there's a few answers to, to, to this one. So one question is, can we trace back to who's actually infected inside the network. So uh, uh, that's sort of the victim. Uh, so yes, that is possible. The attribution of that um, uh, infected client IP is possible on the proxy. Now the attribution of who actually is the attacker, to a certain extent, yes, that is possible. If we're looking the the initial infection and where that infection is, is coming from. So we would uh, give you the the attribution of, of portion of the malicious infrastructure, and for the uh, the advanced threat, uh, we can and where possible we do uh, display the characteristics of that malicious 
uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, domains, IPs, and autonomous systems. Thank you, Petter. And what is the difference between this and uh, ASA with Firepower Services? It looks like they are similar and both doing uh, URL filtering. Um, so can uh, maybe actually, I've, I've got to switch rooms here. So maybe uh, either Petter, Ben, or Mahul can answer that. And if not, we can go on to another question and I can answer that as soon as I get to another place, okay? Sure. Okay, Petter, do you want to take uh, take that question? I've seen Ben answering in the original chat, so if Ben, you want to take that? Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. uh, Ben, is everyone there? Can you hear my... Uh... Yes. Okay, wonderful, sorry about that. So I would say um, there's a... Um, there's a short answer and a very, very long answer because it depends on the, on the requirements. I think the short answer is that um, if the requirement for the security is being driven by, for example, a heavy and increasing SSL inspection, or if the requirement is driving towards unlocking all of the advanced threat capabilities that you've just seen, like cognitive, then the the best choice for the for the for that particular deployment is is CWS because of of what it provides in terms of HTTPS and in terms of the additional services that you can add. If the driver is very basic, for example, URL filtering, then you can add the license on to to ASX to Firepower Services. Um, or if the requirement is purely for an NGFW, um, and that's, that's the extent of the scope, then I think the ASA is a, is a good choice. Now, we have positioning, um, and I, I realize the links we posted there were, were not accessible to all. So in the chat, I was going to highlight what I'm talking about now, but at a very high level, that's the, that's the, the, the difference, and that's the reason that you would choose one uh, above the other. Thank you. And there's a lot of questions here about the differences between the particular Cisco products. So here's a question on uh, what's the difference between this and Meraki? Petter or Ben or? I, I've, I've got that one. I'm back. Okay. Thank you, um, sir. Sure. So uh, the basic difference is that Meraki is a cloud-managed service. Uh, it, it's cloud-managed switches and routers. So it does have some security. So it has Kaspersky for your malware, and then it has BrightCloud for your URL filtering. Uh, so it's more like a, I would say, butcher knife versus a scalpel kind of example, where uh, our, our product is much more specialized, but Meraki is, is all in one. So it just, it really depends on the organization's needs, uh, which offering you would choose. And we do do things similarly, but the specific functionalities and, and benefits are actually a little bit different. Okay, one more question on some of the differences here. What is the difference between this and the on-premium solution WSA? Yeah, so um, there's a few differences. Uh, number one, uh, there's so the caching example that I had uh, before where you actually have that with CWS when you connect onto, uh, when you use your redirection method as the WSA, um, as, as that method. So you have caching, uh, but on, on WSA all the time. And then another uh, difference is the outbreak intelligence feature that I described, so scanning each different piece of the page for malware. That's something that uh, CWS has uh, that WSA does not. And then also cognitive threat analytics is not yet on WSA. Um, and there, oh, the other big, uh, big difference is that WSA has a more robust DLP solution. Okay. And there's a question here uh, dealing with organizations that are most served by the solution. So what organizations do you recommend this solution for? 
We particularly recommend the cloud solution for highly distributed enterprises, so uh, with uh, organizations with a lot of branch offices. Um, and then we actually, we also recommend it for a retail or that specific uh, 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 branch office. So um, it could be for that one branch office or it could be for the larger organization with a lot of different branch offices. That's kind of the, the sweet spot of the, the cloud solution, definitely. Okay, and uh, what detection method, uh, signature matching or heuristic method, does CWS use it to classify an event as a threat to the network? Ooh, Petter, do you want to Petter, you wanna, uh, uh, answer that one? Uh, absolutely, happy, happy to, to answer that one. So, so primarily, let's talk about the, the cognitive threat analytics. What we do here is actually we model the uh, behaviors, uh, web browsing behaviors of all the individual users within the context of their uh, entire network, and we're looking for uh, deviations from uh, a norm uh, where we initially built a predictive model of what the, the network would look like in the next time instance. So it's a bunch of statistical modeling, uh, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, so based off of uh, self-learning uh, capability of the, uh, the detection engine. So, so yeah, the, the, the core technology behind that is uh, multi-agent modeling and artificial intelligence. Great, thank you very much. Okay, well, I think that concludes the Q&A portion of today's event. Um, you can ask more questions from this webcast on the Ask the Expert discussion. And we have a little trivia question for you. Marconi, Morris Code, and Cisco Security, what do they have in common? Uh, so you can take a moment to answer that. We'll give you an answer a little later. Uh, basically, that's A, while demonstrating a telegraph by Marconi, security was hacked and Morse code messages were sent out in what was to become one of the early incidents of hacking. Uh, the founders of Cisco were distant relatives of Marconi, which created the first incidents of code and security in the development of Morse code transmissions. And C, the telegraph used to send out Morse code as first developed by Marconi was hacked aboard one of the ships using it to send out a distress message. So take a moment to answer uh, that, and we'll answer that a little bit later. If you haven't already logged into the Cisco support community recently, we encourage you to do so. We have a brand new look and feel and increased options and features, so log in and start sharing today. And just to note, our presence in social media continues to expand, so we encourage you to visit the community and join us through the channels. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And you can also sign up for our newsletter uh, subscription, which goes out on a monthly basis. We continue to expand our reach in many different languages, and perhaps we have one already available in a language of your choice. These are not simply translated sites. These are actually active standalone sites in native languages. And we have them in Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, and Russian, and we also now have a community in Chinese. And if you're looking for more information on IT and technical training, log into the Cisco Learning Network and take advantage of the technical webinars that they have to offer. You can go to the link provided in the chat to learn a little bit more. And now we're gonna answer that uh, trivia question for you. The answer was A. While demonstrating a telegraph by Marconi, security was hacked and Morse code messages were sent out in what was to become one of the early incidents of hacking, which is Cisco is striving to prevent modern day hackers from infiltrating networks with this suite of security products. So before signing off today, please go ahead and take a moment to answer the survey for today's evaluation. And uh, this will help us address your business needs and interests in the future. I also want to mention that we're just around the corner from Cisco Live in uh, June, where we'll be returning to San Diego. The Cisco support community, among some of our other portfolio products, will be there in attendance. So we hope to see you there. And so this is gonna conclude our session today. I wanna thank Story for sharing her expertise with us today. Also wanna thank uh, our experts, Petter, for answering your technical questions and some of the other individuals that answered the questions. I wanna thank you all for attending and have a great day and we'll see you on the Cisco Support Community. <laughs>